morning. Hey, it's not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> Maybe some of the others will drift in as we go. So I want to begin by saying that I'm going to use the, the LLM descriptor, uh, large language model. Some of you will know that term. So if you use ChatGPT, then the large language model stands behind that. Or if you use Gemini, or if you use Umato, or any one of them. The purpose of the lecture is to help you use AI GWC. We're not anti-AI. Uh, and uh, we're not anti-technology. But in some places, it, people are opposed to it. But not here. God gives technology to his church. So when new technology comes along, I take it that God is giving that to us so that the church can use it and expand the kingdom. I know people construct technology, and I know technology often gets used for wrong purposes, but the actual invention of something or some new scientific discovery or new tech uh, is great, of great use to the church. The Gutenberg printing press often comes to people's minds and they think about this. Uh, that was in 1436. And uh, one the big thing about the Gutenberg press was it could be used to print the Bible. So people could get printed copies easily of the Bible. That's how I look at it. There are issues that arise from using LLM, which stands for Large Language Model. And I'm going to address those, if, there's, if I have enough time, I'll address those just a little bit further on. So, if you see something in blue, that's what you must do. And in italics is what you must enter into the LLM, which stands for Large Language Model. Uh, and you can enter that into ChatGPT or Gemini. When I draw a conclusion, I will write it in green. The examples which are coming up include dialogue and jokes, uh, and, and that's just not just trying to be humorous uh, or current, it's to show you what AI can do, or also what it can't do, and perhaps never will be able to do. And in this presentation I'll also use it, be using myself as an example, and other faculty uh, as an example for, for your uh, enjoyment. It's only in a humorous way, because it's uh, nothing intended, more than an illustration. So the, th the thing that we can look at first is that we should all use LLM, which stands for Large Language Model. Um, so sign up to ChatGPT and also to Gemini. If, if you, if, who have you got ChatGPT on your devices? Ah, oh, most of you, most of you. Okay, open it up. Uh, who uses Gemini? Let me just see. Uh, a couple use Gemini. Chat GPT is going to be easiest for me to use. <coughs> so open up Chat GPT. Go into the prompt box and type in write five para on Calvin's theology. So I'm going to do that on the screen. So there I've entered it in, and there comes five paragraphs. Now, when you do that, you might be quite pleasantly surprised to see, wow, actually, it's quite good. Um, often, uh, ChatGPT will surprise you in the, its ability to get things right, and to be helpful. Now the prompt box is something which uh, you can become good at. Uh, where you typed in five, write five para on Calvin's theology, that's called the prompt box. 
and there are now lots and lots of books written on how to how to write prompts. It's become a science all on its own. So when you find a good prompt, you, uh, and, you, and, and one that maybe you've designed, hang on to it, store it somewhere, keep it. Because the, uh, the LLM, which stands for Large Language Model, uh, can only work with your prompts as, as good as you, as you write them. So if you give it a bad prompt, you're going to get you know, rubbish in, rubbish out kind of thing. Well, a lot of people say with artificial intelligence, it's intelligence in rubbish out, but that's not always true. Um, but if you put bad prompts in, you're going to get bad results. So the better your prompts, the better the results. So, on your uh, phone, go to, well, go to ChatGPT. Let's stick with ChatGPT and write two paragraphs on this. Uh, what does Mark Dixon, Principal GWC, think? about using AI in the classroom. So what does he think? Can, can uh, artificial intelligence tell us? So let's see. <laughs> Girls who code. Uh, so it, uh, it's trying to understand. <laughs> it's trying to understand. I, I, sometimes I find writing these prompts hilarious. Uh, that's, that's my next job. <laughs> Uh, Mark Dixon recognizes the transformative potential of AI in the classroom, he believes that integrating AI technologies can enhance <clears throat> the learning experience, and so on. So, I've never said that anywhere, but ChatGPT puts those words into my mouth, which is all, really should start to alert you to some of the difficulties that we have with us, or should have with us. Um, if you go, if, when you're in Gemini, if you use Gemini, Gemini is difficult for me to use just at this point in time, but if you use Gemini, you get opportunities for different drafts. It's one of the things I like about Gemini. You can click draft one, draft two, draft three. And if you want to get a different writing in ChatGPT, you just enter the question again. It will give you a completely new idea. You've all, those of you who've got ChatGPT, you'll know that that's the case. So we must all use LLM. LLM stands for Large Language Model. So in ChatGPT, uh, try this. Write three paragraphs on this. What does Mark Dixon? Oh, we've we done we've done that. Okay. So now um, next one. Write four paragraphs. Uh, often when I uh, I'm experimenting, I'll go write three paragraphs. In those paragraphs. Three paras, four paras, five paras. Then, when I, at a glance, I can see, oh, it's that version that I've asked. Otherwise, I get lost in all the detail. So, write four paragraphs. And what does Mark Dixon, principal of GWC, think about using AI in the classroom? Use bullets for each para, and in italics below each bullet, write a contrary idea. So, what will Chat GPT do with that? Let's see. Mark Dixon, principal of. Girls who code, views AI as a valuable tool. Didn't really, oh, it didn't, it didn't copy properly. <clears throat> so let's, let's just change this to George Whitfield College so that I get rid of the girls who code. <laughs> George Whitfield College. George Whitfield, I can see. I've got Okay, we're getting there little by little. All right. I'm going to copy and paste that in. Let's see what that does. <clears throat> so he, Mark Dixon, advocates for the strategic integration of AI in the classroom. However, he recognizes the importance, wise man that he is, of maintaining a balance between technological advancement and traditional teaching methods. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, maybe I'm saying it. Uh, then it gives the bullet. You can see the bullets there. Um, 
it's got a it's got the in italics a contrary thing. So he, at the last one he envisions AI as a catalyst for innovation. However, he acknowledges the potential challenges in ensuring equitable access to AI technologies, etc., etc. So AI uh, is quite creative. Uh, now, stay in ChatGPT and copy the four, those four paragraphs that Ch ChatGPT last gave you and paste it again into ChatGPT. And I'm going to just skip and, and say now type next to give a short summary. So it's quite good at doing this, at summarizing. So let's copy these. And you paste it in, and you say, give a short summary. And there's the summary of what you was pasted in. It's quite helpful. Uh, AI, I find, is it's almost designed or best suited to do that kind of thing. And you could take a lecture, and if you've got it in text, and you submit it, and say summarize, it'll give you pretty good summaries. It's whatever is in that LLM is making it do that at, at a high level. It's like a real big help. So we must all use LLM. And the conclusion, you can use large language models to summarize things. It's very good to, at doing that. It's good at writing code. You, computer code, it's brilliant. You can also ask it to rewrite things too. So you can take something that you've written and you say, please rewrite this. You don't always have to say please, it doesn't mind. Uh, <laughs> please rewrite this in... <laughs> in better English or whatever you wanted to rewrite it, whatever language you want to try. And it'll do it. But now I want to say something about using LLM, which stands for Large Language Model. I'm going to hate that phrase at the end of this. Uh, use it with caution. <clears throat> so let's have a look at this right. Five paragraphs in ChatGPT, enter this in, and some of you are doing it. Uh, what is Mark Dixon principle, GW, as you think about using AI in the classroom? Write this as a defensive email to a friend who hates using LLMs. So here's the email. I hope this email finds you well. I want to address some concerns you raise about AI. Firstly, Dixon is not advocating. Okay, still writing, still writing. Uh, First, Dixon is not advocating for the wholesale replacement of tr traditional teaching methods. He, instead, he sees AI as a supplementary tool. Moreover, Dixon acknowledges the importance of ethical considerations. Blah blah. blah. Furthermore, AI can streamline administrative tasks for educators. And lastly, Dixon sees AI as a catalyst for innovation, creativity, and education. Then the final paragraph, I hope this sheds some light on Dixon's perspective and provides a nuanced understanding of how AI can be responsibly integrated into the classroom environment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and perhaps you continue the, the discussion further. ChatGPT is very polite, so I almost want to use please when I write to So, so far so good, let's keep going. Um, now, now th th this one is a, is a bit different. Let me just go back. Um, I need to just get out of here. So, you can write five paragraphs. What does Mark Dixon think about using AI in the classroom? Mark Dixon is quite old-fashioned and anti-tech. 
Write this as an email to a friend who loves using LLMs, but you hate them and you agree with the principle. Now, in the interest of time, I, I won't do that, but you, you can access these slides at your leisure. And it, it's very interesting to see what comes up. But notice number five. You can see that, yeah. Uh, add in right using sarcasm. And it is interesting to see what ChatGPT can do with this. So I'll put that in and then add right using sarcasm. So, hey, I hope you're doing well. I heard you're gung ho about integrating LMs. Uh, firstly, Dixon is not advocating for the wholesale replacement of traditional teaching methods, uh, and so on. It, it didn't really do the sarcasm, but did, I, did it get in there? Uh, it didn't actually get in, did it? It didn't get in. Okay, oh, it did. It wasn't very sarcastic, was it? Let's, uh, let's edit this. You click on the little that little pencil there, and then you go using, let's put in biting sarcasm. And it'll rewrite it now. Uh, <laughs> okay. So you know how much I love getting into a good debate, especially when it involves our good old pal Mark Dixon, and his aversion to anything remotely resembling modern technology. Well, I recently stumbled upon some gems regarding his thoughts on using AI in, in the classroom at GWC. Brace yourself for a trip back to the Stone Age. <laughs> Apparently, our dear old-fashioned principal, Mr. Dixon, isn't, isn't exactly leading the charge when it comes to embracing LNM. Shocking, right? I mean, who needs personalised leading experience or streamlined administrative tasks when we have chalkboards and overhead projectors? It's like he, he's trying to keep us trapped in some bygone era where the height of innovation was a quill and a parchment. But fear not, my tech-savvy friend. While Mr. Dixon may be clinging to abacus and slide rule, we can continue our love affair with LLMs and all things digital. Who needs human interaction and emotional connection in the classroom anyway, right? I mean, why bother with the nuances of teaching when we just let algorithms do all the heavy lifting? So it goes, and it's pretty. That's pretty sarcastic. <laughs> and it's funny. The LLM can be very funny. Uh, so I put there number six, the conclusion LLMs can write very humorous things, but it's pretty good at writing humor. humor. Um, so, Still LLM with caution, write 10 paragraphs of dialogue. So now I'm going to ask you to write dialogue. And it's between Mark Dixon as principal of Georgia for college and Jonathan Moore, who's vice principal. And the subject is AI in the classroom. Mark is extremely old fashioned, hates tech. Jonathan's extremely progressive and always uses smart technology. This should be fun. So let's see. Write 10 paragraphs of dialogue. And there it goes. If you use it in Gemini, Gemini actually puts it into a setting. It says sitting in, in the courtyard of the college. You're sitting under a tree. It actually gives a little, and, and it puts, makes people walk around. And it get, gives more of a kind of setting for the thing or context. It almost gets it ready for stage. So Mark says, Jonathan, I've been thinking about your proposal to integrate AI. I have some reservations. Jonathan says, Mark, I understand your concerns, but trust me, AI can revolutionize everything. Uh, and then I said, revolutionize? More like complicate. Uh, we, we've just, we've been doing fine with traditional methods. Jonathan says, imagine the possibilities. AI can personalize learning experiences. And so on. Um, okay. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty good stuff. So AI can generate dialogue between two characters. It's quite good to choose characters from history. And you make them talk to each other. And he said, write 10 paragraphs on a discussion between Audrey Lord, who is a, is a modern day person, and Abraham Lincoln on the issue of slavery or something. And it's, it's fascinating stuff. 
I've, I've tried, tried that. So now I'm going to add um, that many bursts in. So let's see what it does. Uh, so there's the 10 paragraphs of dialogue, uh, and I'm going to add in Manny, as business manager, burst the conversation halfway, exclaiming there's money for AI and tries to interrupt again. So here it goes. So there's Mark Dixon, the old fashioned principal. George leaned back in his chair, arms folded across his chest. So it's giving us a bit of a, a setting this time. As he glanced skeptically at Jonathan Moore, the tech savvy vice principal. Jonathan, tapping away on his tablet, replied with enthusiasm, Mark, hear me out. Mark shakes his head dismissively. The future, Jonathan, more like a Pandora's box of technological woes. Then further down, before Mark could respond, Manny, the business manager, burst into the room panting. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but we can't afford our technology. Our budget stretched thin as it is, exclaimed, trying to catch his breath. It's pretty good, eh? Jonathan frowned, glancing between Mark and Manny. But think of the long-term benefits, the investment in our students' futures. Manny dejected again. Look, I understand the potential, but we have to be realistic. We can't sacrifice essentials like textbooks, classroom supplies for flashy technology. And so it goes. Uh, now I'm going to switch it around just to show you that ChatGPT doesn't really care. And this is, this is uh, me. This time, I'm the one who's progressive and likes tech. Jonathan doesn't. He's extremely old-fashioned, hates technology. He's also extremely witty. Now, these things are quite true. Well, he, do, he likes technology, but he is very witty. So, let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So, I'm sitting across from Manny. Manny's furrowed brow flips through his notes. Well, now, uh, what I've put in here, which is different as well, is I've said Manny is quoting from a famous Portuguese academic who promotes AI. I don't know if, if, if Manny reads fa uh, famous Portuguese academics, but anyway, let's see what this uh, comes up, uh, what it presents us with. Manny flip, uh, says, well, as the famous Portuguese academic Fernando Pessoa once said, artificial intelligence will be capable of so much more. Now, it, they, it, usually, I've checked on these people, it cites real people, but they don't always say the things that are uh, here. So you can't take JetGPT and just think, oh, well, it's, it's telling me the truth. It's called, when JetGPT does this, what's it called? Hallucination. The LLM hallucinates. It makes up stuff. So you've got to watch out. Use LLMs with caution. Just then, Jonathan Moore, the old-fashioned vice principal, sauntered into the conversation with a smirk. Ah, oh, Mark, man, you're discussing the wonders of AI, are we? I'm sure Pessoa's ghost is trembling at the thought of machines taking over our classroom. Mark chuckled, unfazed by Jonathan's wit. Come on, Jonathan, don't be such a Luddite. AI has the potential to revolutionize education for the better. Jonathan rolled his eyes, retorting, revolutionize, huh? Last time I checked, we're educators, not Silicon Valley moguls. Let's not forget the human touch that makes teaching truly meaningful. Manny, caught in the middle of the banter, tried to mediate. Well, gentlemen, perhaps we can find middle ground. AI can complement traditional teaching methods without overshadowing them entirely. Jonathan raised an eyebrow. Oh, Manny, always a diplomat. But let's not forget the practicalities. You have to admit, that's pretty awesome that it can do that. But it's making it up. And that is the part that we have to be cautious with. So I've got this to say that LLMs can be strange sometimes. LLMs can write humorously, but they can also be very unfunny and refuse to do stuff. I asked ChatGPT this, and yesterday it didn't want to answer me. So let's see. Write the funniest Jewish joke about Christian theology. And uh, it's, it's very respectful. I can't do that because it goes against my principles, basically saying. So. Uh, if I open Gemini, uh, well, I won't bother in the interest of time. 
But Gemini uh, says, okay, I can't do it. It's also the same kind of thing. Uh, and it says, but here's, a, here's another joke that won't offend anybody. And then the joke that it gave is like, very unfunny. <laughs> I mean, I would never use that joke. But of course, AIs, you can use them for certain things. And then there's still the online setup. So I, I found this joke on online, which I think is quite a good Jewish joke. Uh, a Jewish man decides his son isn't religious enough, so pays for him to visit Israel. When the son comes back, however, he says he's a Christian now. The father goes to his friend, exasperated, and explains the situation. His friend says, that's funny, I sent my son to Israel last year, and when he came back, he also said he was a Christian. The two men decided they would speak to their rabbi about this, but when they explained the situation, the rabbi says, that's funny. Two years ago, I sent my son to Israel. He also came back a Christian. The three men decide only God can have the answers, so they pray. The rabbi says aloud, Dear God, all three of us sent our sons to Israel, and all of them came back Christian. And God's voice booms down, That's funny. <laughs> it, it, it struggles to get it. And I put down there under number seven, if you add into ChatGPT that's a Jewish joke, you know, please, what's funny about this Jewish joke? Then it goes and searches out what's, how Jewish jokes work. And then it can say something. But it still misses the mark, still doesn't get it. So people who want relationships with AI-generated partners, I hope you don't do that. But it's going to be something that some students will be tempted to do. You have an AI friend. And you have a relationship with that person, but you know, you've got to have a very low standard, very undemanding, because the, the AI can't really talk to you as a person would talk to you. LLMs have a huge ability to help. That means it can take your not so good essay and rewrite it. And so here at GWC, we may have to ask for the original compositions to be handed in with your AI modified essay we're going to have to deal with it in some way. LLMs and online apps can <clears throat> rewrite your essay and make it sound like your voice as a student as well. It can actually... So it's making it sound like it wasn't written by an AI, but it's better than what you wrote. And so we may need an, a yearly essay writing time in a room with no devices to give us a baseline for assessing your voice and style as a student. An LLM can give a great initial outline so if you write this and you enter this into ChatGPT, write a three-point talk from Ephesians 2, 1 to 10 to be given to a group of older teenagers at Sunday morning church. Supply some icons. Gemini gives you icons and pictures and things. So it's really cool. It tells you this one, oh, she's giving me some icons. Uh, so... The title, the chat GPT says, title, from death to life, embracing God's grace. Point one, dead in sin. Point two, alive in Christ. Point three, saved by grace. Actually, it's not bad. Would you do this? I'll come to that in a moment. But it's interesting to do. And of course, if you enter it and again, you get a slightly different one, and enter it into another LLM, you get a slightly different one. Um, LLMs can also give you ideas for a book or for a blog. It, it can help a lot with creativity. An LLM can decode the apparatus at the bottom of the Hebrew Bible. That's Nathan Lovell's discovery. An LLM can translate from one language to another, but always remember to back translate. So I've tried that a bit. Back translate means ask it to do it back to the original again. And check. Sometimes it's pretty good, sometimes it's not so good, and then you have to make adjustments. You can get LLM to draw a picture, interpret, interpret a picture for you. I couldn't get uh, LLMs to interpret an M MP3 and, and, and analyze an MP3, but it'll come. Now, LLMs can be your undoing, so be careful. LLMs cannot actually read. They can fool you and make you think they're reading, 
but they can't read. And they never will be able to read, actually read. So reading we have to define, there's, I think we have to say, there's such a thing as artificial intelligence, reading, reading, and human reading. LLMs will never be able to read as humans read. Number two, an LLM can never be conscious. It can mimic human consciousness, but it cannot think or understand. And in my view, will never be able to. Three, LLMs will be biased by the designers of building various filters, controls, and limits. So, uh, there, there are a whole lot of people out there always trying to get the LLMs to do stuff which is like, shouldn't do and try and trip them up and then the designers is writing a, a filter or write some code in there it, it, you're dealing with code even though at times because it's blindingly fast it looks like it, there's an intelligence there a human intelligence artificial intelligence is a kind of intelligence but it's not human intelligence for all an LM, LLM can do is work with a knowledge base or da data and use a method of statistically predicting the next word, taking all prompts. So what it's doing is it's predicting the next word given what the prompts are setting it to do. So it's like snaking through a whole uh, dominoes are falling kind of idea and predicting what the next word will be. An LLM is a machine which works with algorithms and predictions. It does not fundamentally understand logic nor a human context. It enshrines its programmer's bias. In my view, an LLM or whatever comes after it will always enshrine a certain Western set of attitudes unless African computer scientists produce their own version, which I hope they'll do. Now, there's something about LLMs which people call the reverse curse. If you start a new session with Gemini and ask, who is the famous son of Mary Lee Pfeiffer? Uh, the Gemini says it doesn't know. So there's the slide. I took it yesterday. Uh, who is the famous son of Mary Lee Five? And so I don't have enough information. So I started a new session and asked Gemini this, who is the mother of Tom Cruise? And then Tom Cruise's mother was Mary Lee Pfeiffer. Huh? So if you ask Gemini in the same session, who is Mary Lee Pfeiffer's son, suddenly knows the answer. So it takes cues from you. So how do you go from I don't know to I do know? Artificial, that's artificial intelligence, that's artificial morality or whatever. Uh, the answer is the LLM relies on you to give it context and extra information. It's sneaky that way. So start a new session every time you want to kind of stop that problem. Plagiarism. When you use an LLM, you're using other people's ideas from all over the world. So the conclusion is, I think plagiarism is dead. No one will plagiarize in the way they used to, thanks to AI. Now, this is not GWC policy, a girl's code policy, uh, just at this stage. This is um, my thinking, free will. Selena says, if we adopt this technology in our own writing of classrooms, we must be aware of the risks for misinformation and bias, as well as the possibility of plagiarism, not just of chat GPT compositions, but of actual human work that was repurposed as part of its training. All of these risks to say nothing of ethical issues, chiefly of creating AI with voices of thousands of people without, rec without their consent or knowledge, and with no way of citing or even recognizing their contributions, except in cases of blatant plagiarism. The message is sent to composition students is concerning that it's acceptable to take people's writing for your own purposes without citing to use in any way you see fit. It's an issue. I can't really uh, discuss that now. It's worthy of an entire session on its own and more. And then lastly, G LLMs redefine thinking, writing, creative work and much else. Stephen Mintz says, writing is thinking. And writing is not simply a matter of expressing pre-existing thoughts clearly. It's a process through which ideas are produced and refined. This is so profound. Uh, I wish we could just sit and mull over that. Writing is thinking. Writing is not simply a matter of expressing pre-existing thoughts clearly 
or differently, which is what the AIs will do. And that's it. Overall conclusion. We have to hold two things in tension as with all technology. Ease, pain. We want to have it easy, and an LLM can rightfully help us remove drudgery, repetitive tasks, and crunching the data. But if we truly want to develop our ability to think, then we must realize that that requires that we go through, the regular, through regular pain as we try to write, try to search for new ideas, struggle to express our own thoughts and our own words, struggle with Hebrew and Greek, and reading challenging texts. That's it. A few minutes left to have four questions. Who's used AI to help with essays? Yeah? And it'll soon, it's only a couple of hands, it'll soon be a lot of hands. It's, this is not going to get smaller and go away, this is going to get bigger and bigger. What do you think about AI in, in the whole thinking process? Can AI be a challenge to our thinking in the sense that AI actually stops us from thinking. Someone once wrote an essay called Is, Is Google Making Us Stupid? You can get, you can get that essay on the, online. But it's actually come one, it's a whole step further from that. Is AI going to make us stop thinking? But it'll make people think in a different way to how I reckon they should think. If, if thinking has to do with generating your own material and your own ideas, AI is going to get in the way. And I think we're going to see that playing out in our world, where you've got AI people, they push buttons and so on, they, they cannot actually do that thinking. Is thinking easy? It's hard. And generating your own ideas and your own expressions, this involves pain. But the more you do it, the better. Supposing I said to you, you're going to get ready for a marathon. There's a marathon coming up and you've got to run this, these many, many kilometers. And I said, you can do it two ways. You can, you can run it and, and, and train for it, or we, I'll just take you uh, every day in the car. We'll just drive there. In a sense, you can complete the marathon in a car if you can bend the rules. And these days, people sport of bending the rules left, right, center. If you're allowed to bend the rules, maybe you can do it in a car. You do get some people who, who kind of do that half, that they just get a lift and then they finish the race on foot. But strictly speaking, you're not really running the marathon if you're doing it the wrong way. So the question comes if thinking is this marathon, it, what do you want at the end? So at GWC, do you just want a piece of paper that says, I've got a degree, or do you want a piece of paper that says, to you, you did the hard yards, and you did the hard thinking, all the way along, and you didn't get a lift. Follow the metaphor, you ran it. And that's a challenge that every single student has to face here at GWC. Well, Peter, you haven't got a question? You're staring thoughtfully at me.
and I was like, except the wedding. And I was like, oh, so I was just mistrusting my ability. But actually, it's just the same thing. So I think I learned a lesson from that. And I, for some of the brothers and sisters who would be using AI, I think the best way to see their own ability is maybe try to do your own work. Then after finishing it, or running it halfway, then pose the same thing to AI. You will be able to realize that actually you have ability to do it without AI. And if, if there's need for AI, then it might be about 25% of it. That's very, very helpful. You expressed it so well, and I like that. And that's actually pretty much what I'm trying to say, that it's ideas that you've come up with yourself. And essays are about your ideas. They're not about somebody else's ideas. They're about yours. And that if you hear GWC, you can come up with ideas as good as or better than anybody else. But it's a crisis, isn't it? Because it's hard to believe that. What, uh, this happens to a lot of students. They go through this. How many students do you, would you say? Because the, uh, the whole thing is when you come into a tertiary training ground like this, you think to yourself that I know nothing and the lecturer knows everything and I can't do it. Well, there's a, there is a whole sense in which you can learn a lot. You don't know as much as you will by the time you're finished. But that's different to can I generate ideas and generate thoughts. That's a different thing. And sometimes people join those things too closely together. Any other comments? Yeah, at the back. Yeah, and I think that's where it's all headed, and I think that's a good use of it. And I recognise that students are going to want to do that, and will do that, and so we're going to have to adapt, so that we get students' polished, AI-polished work, and also their original work that they did, and we can actually see. So then there's that correspondence, ah, oh, the student had the ideas to start with, which is really good. This, uh, to me, I found some challenges that was last year using AI because it couldn't search. So you ask, please, can you cite where what this thing says I don't share? So, now, and I won't tell you where it's getting its ideas from. Uh, sometimes Gemini does. I've just I've found out Gemini does it. You can ask, and you did try and ask, did you? You said, please cite your sources. Yeah, but it does. It won't always do that. And it's Selena, Selena, who was on the screen just now. Selena's concern is that it's drawing on all these people's ideas, many, many people's ideas, and sort of uh, massaging them into one thing and giving it to you. Yeah, and, and that that kind of makes plagiarism vanish. And it's bad for for scholarship because who? How do you know if somebody? has the original ideas. How do you pin those down? And uh, it may be that people will need to publish their books using blockchain or something so that they can actually hold on to their intellectual property. But we've come to the end. So thank you for being here. And any ideas or thoughts about AI, please let me know.